this video I'll be showing you how to slice your samples. In the last video I showed you how to sample and in this one I'll be showing you how to take those samples and use them in unique ways. So the first thing you want to do is just have your sample laid out on one pad. So as you can hear I just have like a two bar drum break on, on this one pad. Now once that's set you can go into sampling mode and the first thing you see is this recording menu like we had last time. But now what we're going to do is hit the nav button and the second pad up here. And this is going to go into the edit menu. So up here you have all these different um, different functions you can do to your sample. And the one that I always do is called normalize. And so I'm just going to hit that and make sure everything is um, as loud as it should be. And then I'll go over to the truncate and start chopping my sample up. Or actually, this is just going to um, bring the start point and the end point in to where you need it to be. So as you can see on the waveform here, my sample ends a long time after the, uh, the actual drum break ends. So I want to bring in that end point to the end of the sample and then um, truncate it. So honestly, I kind of do this on my computer most of the time, but you can still do it on the hardware. The main thing is to get the, um, the zoom right. To do that, you can hit this view button make sure you're on the wave and you can zoom quite a bit in and then here you have um, the, the waveform zoomed in you can head to your start point and bring that in and mine's already looking good so I'm not going to worry about that but I'm going to head over to the end point and bring this in to where the, um, the sample ends and it's kind of a pain with this click knob but um, you can press it down to get finer adjustments then it seems to hardly adjust at all but um, I think it like snaps to the transients, so that's good for stuff like this when there's a really clear end. So I'm just going to bring that in, and that looks good enough. And um, once you have those set, you can just hit the truncate button up here, and machine will cut away all the excess and just leave you with the sample. Alright, so that's sounding good, and it's ready to chop. When you're ready to do that, you can hit the nav button and this third pad up here. And this is going to be um, all your different options for slicing. You have a couple of different modes here, split, grid, and detect. I normally leave it on split, but um, you can do grid, which is um, exactly onto your BPM grid. And you can also do detect, which is cool if you have a drum break and you just want to get like the one shots. The one thing that um, that seems to do is leave you not with equal length samples, so it's good if you just want the one shots, but if you're um, chopping it up for equal slices, I think the best is a split. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to head over to the next one and you can choose how many slices you actually want. This is only two bars so I think I'm just going to go with, um, with eight slices here. Um, once that's all set you can head over and change your tempo. I usually just leave it on auto because I don't actually know the tempo of this. I guess if you're resampling something from like your DAW and you know the tempo that you're working with you can um, you can manually enter the tempo but I think a good rule of thumb is just to leave it on auto. Um, and if you do need to change it, um, that's what you'll do it there. But anyways, um, I think I have everything set here. And you can hear how machine is already starting to slice it up. Now in these ones, it seems like there's a little bit of space in between the, um, the start of the slice and the actual sample. So what I'm going to do is head over into um, uh, the waveform on my computer. Like I said, I find it easier just to work with my computer to do this. And I'm just going to drag over the, the start of the slice to the exact start of the transient. Alright, so I did that pretty quickly, but I think it's sounding okay. Just make sure you have everything set how you want it to be. And when you're set, uh, you can hit this apply button up here, and it's going to ask you to choose either a pad or a group. And I like to put it on a group, and what that does is put each slice as its own sound. So then you're free to um, to put your own effects and, um, and whatnot on each on each slice individually. So I'm going to hit the group button and then just choose some random group. And now you have you have each slice as its own sound, and you can start playing around with it. And the first thing I do when I slice is uh, clear the pattern that machine automatically puts in there. Um, I guess you can use it if you want, but I don't really find much use for it. So I'm just going to hit the shift button and clear. And um, 
Now that won't play anything when you start the, the pattern pack. And also, I like to go into the, some of the settings and change it so the drum break plays a lot more smoothly. So to do that, um, select your first pad up here, make sure you're on sound, um, hit the nav button, make sure you're on um, modules, and uh, this first module here is always the sampler. So um, the first thing I'm going to change is the polyphony. You can just scroll through until you find it. Um, so here's my polyphony. You can see it's set on 8, and basically what that's going to do is allow it to play um, 8 samples before like cutting it off. So. You can hear how it's not very clean at all. So I'm just going to go through each pad and change the polyphony to one. And after that, the next thing I'm going to do is um, set the choke group. And without a choke group, these will just keep playing no matter if you play any of the other ones. So in other words, they won't cut each other off. And that can again start making things sound pretty dirty. So I'm just going to go through each one and change the choke group and put them on the same choke group. So. so now you have it set so each pad will cut itself off as well as the other pads in the group. And things are sounding pretty good there. So those are just some tips to get um, your slices playing as um, as good as they'll sound, and um, some tips on actually getting those slices set up. And once you have that, you can start working things into their own song. And I have an idea here I'll just show you for the heck of it. you can just have some fun with those. Hope this tutorial gives you some good ideas. As always, you can leave any questions in the comments or send me an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.